<clears throat> okay, picking back up. This would be chapter 21 of the book God dictated to me as he dictated the Torah to Moses and all the books of the prophets to the prophets who probably had some of them do the writings. Uh, David himself may have done the uh, three books that he's in. I think it's Samuel 1, 2, and Kings 1, etc. But the whole book is his. And, you know, dictating the Torah, the first five books of the Hebrew Bible to Moses, Moses couldn't know those things. The Jewish people have uh, taken 613 laws of God from those five books from God to them, delivered by Moses. 613. You know, Christians just got one thing. I accept Jesus as my Savior, and I believe in the resurrection. That's it. You're done. <laughs> you're forgiven of all sin, and I'm going to heaven. Not happening, people. You won't go to heaven. There's only a Jewish heaven. There's no Gentiles who are sin free because Jesus is a myth. Oh, you ought to see God's argument on that in this book. Oh, you can't you can't deny it. I mean, I guess if you're a Christian, you can. It's just too strong. I love that chapter. Uh, if you're looking for the video on it, it's uh, the Essenes of the Dead Sea Scrolls personified Jesus Christ, but didn't write one word of him. And they were prolific writers and copiers and copyists and uh, commentators on the scrolls that became part of, uh, that became the Hebrew Bible. Particularly the scroll, the, they call it the great scroll of Isaiah. I, I guess it was a scroll that had all 70 chapters. It must have been a big scroll. Okay, this is picking up with verse 7 of Isaiah 53. I've already uh, completed Rashi on 21 part 10. No. It was 11. I hope I, I have to check that. This is 12. Now, I've done this before in 11 parts. I, I, don't, I think I'm talking too much. God controls my words, by the way. I'm... I'm just a puppet out here. That's all I am. And he speaks through me. Oh, yeah. He spoke through Moses. And he said the prophet like Moses, I will put my words in his mouth and he will speak them. Total control of my mind, speech, writing, and my physical body in the cords of his power that we learn about in the book of Ezekiel. He was maltreated, yet he was submissive. He did not open his mouth like a sheep being led to slaughter, like a ewe, dumb before those who shear her. He did not open his mouth. Midrash form, breaking that down into parts. He was maltreated, yet he was submissive. Commentary. This verse can be identified in the book of Ezekiel. God maltreats him, not man. Now, treatment is a part of being chastised and punished by the words and power of God to be made suitable for his purpose. With God, you are always submissive. It is necessary to break the will of a man and to temper and calm his soul and his emotions. Ezekiel said he went in bitterness and the fury of his spirit in the hand of God. And you think being in the hand of God's a good thing. He said, the Spirit sees me and he is furious and bitter. That's because he's in the fire of refinement. Just like uh, Isaiah 53 says, out of his anguish. Uh, I sent a verse coming up. Yeah, why, why, is he in, why is the righteous servant Moshek in anguish? Why is he coming out of the fire of refinement? Which you can also find in Jonah, Job, and there's videos on that. Ezekiel, of course, and, and now you find out it's actually in 53.
The chastisement, punishment, maltreatment, crushing, and bruising in God's fire of refinement is to remove this bitterness and furious nature of Ezekiel. It is to make a man meek and humble. Moses was called, and when we first meet Moses, he kills a man in anger and he's doing some fighting. Moses was called the most humble man on earth at the end of his life. God had him for 40 years. <laughs> he acts like he never came out of the fire. I don't need to be humble. I'm bringing the wrath of God from Isaiah 51. Why do you think my description starts in 52? <laughs> He's using me to bring the wrath. And a lot of it's the teachings of this book. It's going to sock them in the stomach when they hear me say 53 has to be a Gentile. They're going to deny it. But it's, God says they'll still hit them. And if the Jewish people start saying, hey, Christians, this is the guy. This is Isaiah 53, Moshe, 8 and 11, right here. That's him. Come on, servants. Are you going to work for God or not? He's speaking to his prophet. Huh? <laughs> I can't hear you. God can be very humorous, people. That was him. Oh, yeah, God had him for 40 years. He did not open his mouth. Commentary. Ezekiel was sent to his house. And God bound him with the cords of his power so that he could not go out amongst the people. To the people, Ezekiel was silent as a lamb. He wasn't talking to anyone. The man who is described becomes God's righteous servant will be cut off from the land of the living. That's Ezekiel. He's given a long life in Isaiah 53. But Ezekiel, you're not going out amongst the people. And that's in 53, cut off from the land of the living. This doesn't mean you're dead. It means you just cut off from material things and, and friends. We'll be cut off from the land of the living and be silent as a lamb to all that know him. While God prepares him to be suitable for his purpose that might prosper. Just as he did with Ezekiel. Oh, he had me quit my job and terminate my law licenses, plural, in Hawaii and in Texas, where I was board certified specialist in oil and gas law. That was the second week. He said, you're not going to practice law again. I said, what are you talking about? What am I going to do about money? <laughs> he kind of chuckled. He said, you're not going to have money. He's right. It's just when I turned 63 three years ago, or two and a half, I did start receiving Social Security. It's not a lot, and I use most of it to pay my parents back. I have room and board at their condominium. They help take care of them. They're both in their 90s, or something like that. Rashi does not explain how or when this happened to all of the Jewish people as the man, as one man, Israel. Verse eight, Rashi. From imprisonment and from judgment, he is taken, and his generation, who shall tell? For he was cut off from the land of the living, because of the transgressions of my people. A plague befell them. They've only been gathered as one man Israel two times at Oreb. When all the Israelites came out and received God's uh, first covenant. And according to the book of Ezra, the 13 tribes that returned from exile to Jerusalem and Judah to build the second temple. Ezra says that they gathered as one man Israel. And he's always saying Israelites. It's, it's, there's no question it's all 13 tribes. I, the lost, the ten lost tribes myth. I guess it comes from the town. I don't know. It's man's word, though. That's not God's word. I 
I gotta shut this door. Oh, they shut. Oh, they got that TV up well. They can't hear me. <laughs> okay. From imprisonment and from judgment he is taken. This is Rashi and his commentary. Trying to get situated again. Commentary. The prophet reports and says that the heathens, the nations, the Gentiles, will say this at the end of days. When they see that he, the righteous servant, all the people, all the Jewish people is one man Israel, that he was taken from the imprisonment, that he was imprisoned in their hands, and from the judgment and torments that he suffered until now. Okay, when did all the people, have, this didn't happen in Jerusalem or or. When on earth did all of the Jewish people as one man, Israel, become in prison in the hands of and from the judgment of torments that he suffered until now? Never in prison. It's not all of them. Um, six million were. And his generation, the years that passed over him, The righteous servant, all the Jewish people, was one man in Israel. Who shall tell? The tribulations that befell him from the beginning. He was cut off in exile from the land of the living, that is the land of Israel. For because of the transgressions of my people. The plague came to the righteous among them. I don't know. That's not too, too bad. My commentary, verse 8, JPS 1985. By oppressive judgment, he was taken away. Who could describe his abode? For he was cut off from the land of the living through the sin of my people who deserved the punishment. By oppressive, oppressive judgment, he was taken away. The oppressive judgment is being guilty and receiving a sentence of imprisonment. Offering yourself for guilt. A sentence of imprisonment in his home. And of maltreatment, chastisement, punishment, bruising, and crushing for the sins of the Jewish people. The witnesses. But just so I can make them righteous and bring them back to Judaism... I got a covenant of sin forgiveness with me. Everybody starting over from scratch. Until suitable for God's purpose. A purpose that includes making the many righteous. God is using the verses symbolically with an offering for guilt. Being shown as a guilty plea before a judge of crimes not committed by the defendant. Who can describe his abode? Commentary. Oh, you can't describe Ezekiel's abode. I wouldn't apply to him. The prison. This is Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 34. And a spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. And then he could hear God's words. God was speaking to him. The spirit suddenly entered him. And then he says, And he spoke to me and said to me, Go, shut yourself up in your house. That's verse 8. Silent as a lamb. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 25. This is the chains that you would have in prison. As for you, O mortal, cords have been placed upon you, and you have been bound with them, and you shall not go out among them, the people. 
all of Israel will be able to describe the abode of God's righteous servant Moshe. That's me. I don't know where he, I don't know what kind of house. I don't know what kind of a house is honored. Is it just because God's in it with me? Or he will be? In the day of the Lord. Because of social media and phones with cameras. And abodes to be honored in Isaiah chapter 11. For he was cut off from the land of the living. Commentary. Being cut off from something means you cannot have it or get to it. Cut off from the land of the living by a man given long life means cut off from society and material things of the world. Ezekiel was cut off from the land of the living, bound by God's power in his house, as he went through a process of the, of the refinement of his soul and self, fire refinement, to be made suitable for God's purpose of being a prophet to the Assyrian Babylon exiles. You really look, should look at the videos on Job and on Jonah and how you can see the fire refinement uh, in their their books. It's interesting. We just did it. That's the first time I've seen it. We just, last time I dictated something. Oh. Through the sin of my people, commentary, who deserve the punishment. Ezekiel suffers the punishment of the houses of Israel and Judah for 430 days, pinned to the ground. The houses of Judah and Israel suffered their punishment in exile. They were defeated and dispersed. There was no vicarious suffering. Ezekiel's punishment corresponded to the punishment of the houses of Israel and Judah, likened to being defeated in exile. This is just a part of the refinement of Ezekiel. It would have infuriated the spirit of this priestly man who spent his life trying to bring the Jewish people to repentance to be told he is suffering their punishment for their sins. So that's the kind of thing God will do to you in the fire of refinement. He's just looking for anything that sparks an emotion from you, all your different emotions. And he's clever, people. Crafty. And as he told me, Keith, first week, Keith, your pain does not mean anything to me. And there's no low. I won't go to do what's necessary to change you. I didn't even know what he was talking about. I do now. I know my pain doesn't bother him a bit. I sometimes feel like he's just enjoying it. He says that's not so. Well, it made me feel like that or think that because that further infuriates me. Anything to keep you angry. No, God doesn't. I don't think he really feels much of anything. He's been around. He's just too old. He's been around too long. He's a living being with emotions. And so is the angel, the Holy Spirit. Um... But, you know, he created this world in people. And, you know, anybody would say, well, it's not perfect. And he would tell you, no, it is. It's perfectly what I wanted. It's for his beauty and pleasure. It's kind of like, what is it like? The, not a documentary. It's like a uh, reality show. It's God's reality show. It's got all kinds of crazy things going on all the time. It's a <laughs> Ezekiel spirit that God was calming by infuriating it on purpose over and over again. You know how many times he's made me furious in 16 years? You can't even count it. You'd have to have a calculator. Okay, verse 9, Rashi. And he gave his grave to the wicked 
and to the wealthy with his kinds of death. Oh, that's a terrible, terrible verse. Because he committed no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. <laughs> Rashi, commentary, or Midrash. And he gave his grave to the wicked. Okay, now this is all the Jewish people gathered as one man in Israel. He subjected himself to be buried according to anything the wicked of the heathens, the nations, the Gentiles, would decree upon him, for they would penalize him with death and the burial of donkeys in the intestines of the dogs. Remember, he lived in the, in the middle middle of uh, Ages. I, I don't know. It didn't happen in Jerusalem and, and Orb when they were all gathered. I don't know what he's talking about. To the wicked. Commentary. According to the will of the wicked, he was willing to be buried. <laughs> he would not deny the living God. Midrash. And to the wealthy with his kinds of death and to the will of uh, commentary and to the will of the ruler he subjected himself to all kinds of death that he decreed upon him because he did not wish to agree to the denial of the Torah to commit evil and to rob like all the heathens, the nations, the Gentiles, among whom he lived. When did they live amongst the Gentiles? Well, they, I guess they do now. They got Arabs all over the place. and There's a lot of Christians too in Israel. But it's still not all the Jews gathered in Israel. It's not all the Jews gathered as one man Israel. They've got about 7 million. I think America's got about 7 million. I think Europe and Britain's got about 7 million. Ain't no telling how many more scattered throughout the world. Okay, my commentary. And his grave was set among the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no injustice and had spoken no falsehood. You see what a better verse that is? And you get this crazy commentary from a bad verse. This verse says, The righteous servant of God was poor, but dies a rich man. The righteous servant of God becomes poor when God cuts him off from the world. And then he is given the many as his portion and receives the multitude as his spoil. And his abode will be honored. He will die a rich man. Lots of followers and uh, hopefully some good Saturday donations. Verse 10, Rashi. And the Lord wished to crush him. He made him ill. If his soul makes itself restitution, he shall see children. He shall prolong his days. And God's purpose shall prosper in his hand. Your soul can't make restitution. I'm assuming they just mean him. If he makes himself restitution. I, I don't know. I guess that sounded good in antiquity. Rashi. Midrash. And the Lord wished to crush him. He made him ill. Commentary. The Holy One, blessed be he, wished to crush him and to cause him to repent. Therefore, he made him ill. If his soul makes restitution, said the Holy One, blessed is he, commentary, I will see if his soul will be given and delivered with my holiness to return to me as a restitution for all that he betrayed me. And I will pay him his recompense. 
and he will see children, etc. A Hebrew word, is particular one, is an expression of ransom that one gives to the one against when he sinned. To be free from fault. Similar to the matter mentioned in the episode of Philistines of 1 Samuel 6 and 3. Do not send it away empty, but you shall send it back with it a guilt offering. That sounds like that's from Leviticus, guilt offering. It was a long time ago, but I'll tell you what, I shake my head just as much to the absurdity that Jews for Judaism and Tovia Singer set forth in their commentaries, their midrash on Isaiah 53 saying it's Israel. I do the same thing throughout. It's an absurdity. It's ridiculous. And they're too smart of me. I, I still don't understand what's really going on there. Why not just stick with Moshiach that the sages believed in the Talmud? The 53, you have to have a description of him. Well, y'all took it from God. Jews for Judaism, Toby the Singer, you took it from him. That's his description of his representation. In the day of the Lord, his prophet like Moses. And you have flat out taken it from him? And I've had to bear up to this flower refinement for 16 years now because we can't make any headway because of the thousands of people you have convinced 53 is Israel. You can't get a word edgewise with the Jewish people who would be interested in 53 anymore. And I guarantee, I doubt very few of them have actually seen your commentary. Either one of you. Go ahead and keep stepping on God's toes. Hey, that's good for you. But you've been reckoned with and dismissed because of it, along with every other shepherd, every other rabbi on the face of the earth for practicing a false Judaism instead of the Judaism God created with the Hebrew Bible, preaching man's word, messianic era, world exaltation, world speaking Hebrew, Moshiach will have all of Israel walking in the Torah. Perfect the world. How am I going to perfect the world? <laughs> That's what they teach, Jewish people. And God, this, is God, this is God shaking my head. He can't believe it. Well, he can't believe it. He knew it was going to be going on. He knows everything from beginning to end. But the Lord chose to crush him by disease. That if he made himself an offering for guilt, he might see offspring and have a long life. And that through him, the Lord's purpose might prosper. Now, I've already covered this. I've gone over it, I think, in verse 4. I don't know what part that was. It was uh, 8, 9, and 10, I think. <laughs> But I'll briefly go over it again for those who haven't seen those videos. Okay, Midrash. But the Lord chose to crush him by disease. God's righteous servant will be familiar with disease and his life crushed because of disease that he is afflicted with by the hand and power of God. That, if he made himself an offering for guilt, it is an offer, an offering of oneself for the fire of refinement to God for the guilt of the Jewish people, especially to remove their guilt. In return for possibly uh, be given a long life, and again, I was given one month to live, and I have a long life. That was 22 years ago to possibly seeing his children having long life as a covenant. The offering is only a test of devotion. Will I do these things for God? Will I go 